different as the off season just knowing what you can do and knowing you've done it? Um, I don't think really things any anything dif- different. I think it's just me just focusing on um, trying to hit the ground running, not losing a step, just more like focus on, like I know what the baseline is now, you feel me? So, yeah. What do you think the difference was the Um, I think it's just trust myself, just understanding how my body moves, understanding my body mechanics. Like my rush isn't gonna look the look the same as somebody else's rush, so just understanding that. Patrick Graham said that you were coaching up some of the youngsters. What does that mean for you to be able to take that leadership role now as well? Um, I don't know about a leadership role, but uh, I just think that I've been here for a while, so I understand when like like I don't know. It just feels like it was yesterday that I was one of those guys just coming in the building. So I understand like certain things that I was missing at the beginning that maybe I can help help them with. So. Uh, no, nah, it's definitely an amazing vibe. Great, great to come to work every day. So, um, I don't know. I just everything feels just better. I would say. How much has uh, Christian Wilkins added to that vibe, and what's it been like working with him so far? He's uh, he's definitely a character. He uh, he definitely brings another per- personality into the room, stuff like that. He's enjoyable to be around, so he's a great guy. How much more comfortable have you seen Tyree early on so far? Uh, he's what definitely more like? more more comfortable at the beginning of last last year. Kind of felt like he was like Bambi low key. So <laughs> now, now he definitely, I feel like he's coming into his own, so yeah. When you talk about the, the end of last year, the, you know, kind of finding the results, maybe that the process was always there, you just kind of found the results. Was that, how much was just, just a looser environment? Like it kind of seemed to suit you even at the end of the year? Uh, I mean, I guess it's not like, I mean, for me personally, I think it was more like, like not getting down on myself. Like say if I didn't get home or get a sack or something like that, like it, it wouldn't like, I don't know, I feel like when I was younger, it kind of just made me like uh, get discouraged in a little bit. So I guess it just came down to like powering through that and just like trusting like older guys like Max and stuff like that telling me like it's going to happen. Just keep on, keep, keep on keeping on. You feel me? So. How much also too was it just getting the opportunity to get playing time? And, and how were you able to kind of, I don't know, compartmentalize the fact that you weren't maybe getting those opportunities mm. earlier? I mean, uh, yeah, it does come down to like getting opportunities and stuff like that. But ultimately it's, the coaches got to trust me to, to be out there to do my job. So I think it was also gaining the co- coach's trust and stuff like that. So. Do you think with your uh, off-season program at all, kind of like your training or anything, or is it kind of like the same old same? I'm sorry, what did you say? Your off-season you know, training, was there anything that you did differently to kind of you know, enhance it, or was it kind of like the same thing? Uh, it's kind of the same thing. If it ain't broken, I'm, I'm not, I, ain't, I ain't trying to change it. You feel me? So. Malcolm, where have you gotten better uh, at this off-season? Um, I think just recognition of things, just recognition of a uh, body position for me or body position on an OT. Um, just, I, I would just say that, just recognition of, of everything. Is that more of like a, a film study thing for you or something that you're, you're trying to get? I'd say a little bit of both. I mean, I'm watching guys across the league and seeing like guys similar to my stature, how they, how they uh, get sacks and how they play the game and stuff like that. So I think it's that. And then also like just being out here and really focusing and being present on what I'm doing. Is, I think it's too many to count, to be honest with you. But uh, one thing is just motor, because, like, sometimes your move won't work or you might mess up the technique, but if you keep on, like, if you got a high motor and keep on going, then sometimes you just make plays off, purely off of that. So, so yeah. You said you've been watching guys around the league. Uh, who are some people that you, you play clo- pay close attention to? Uh, recently, well, I, I watch Max a lot, but also, uh, like, Hassan Reddick, I watch him too, so, yeah. Do you like the current offseason setup? Uh, would you rather everything be put back, uh, put it all together, OTAs, mini camp, and everything? I mean, I'm kind of used to this setup, so I don't, I don't mind it. <laughs> Malcolm, uh, with, the, with the talent assembled on the D line now, do you feel like the expectations in the D line room have been raised even higher? Mm, I don't really think so. I think we just more focus on. We understand how talented we are, so it's just kind of like understanding, like just taking it one step at a time, and just like not getting too ahead of ourselves and trying to win the whole season t- y- tomorrow. So. It's just basically taking one, one step at a time, day after day, and just trying to get better on th- at the little things. And pretty much, yeah. There have been certain expectations, though, year by year, like this is this is the year where you can improve this, or this is where we're going to see a, a tipping point. Is there a chip on the shoulder, that prover- pro- proverbial chip on your team's shoulder this year? I don't think it's that. I think it's more of a, just us being ourselves. That's what I think, like, last year towards the end of – Towards the end of last year, that's basically what it is, just playing with our personality and being ourselves and just going out there, just happy to play. So.
As of right now, you know, there's been four defensive stars that have come out of your draft class. You know, when you look at Trayvon and Diablo and yourself, you know, Nate, you know, how much of a relationship do you guys have and how much do you take it upon yourself now to know that you are the leader of this defense? Um, I mean, those are dogs, but I don't know. It's just enjoyable just to be around guys that you came in with that as long as you've been on the field, they've been on the field. So it's definitely a dope little vibe that we got going on. So. What are you and the defense looking forward to the most this season? Um, just playing, just playing, balling with each other, and just enjoying our time with each other that we got. Your position group coach hasn't changed, but there has been some additions of defensive uh, coordinators and, and guys who played. How important is it to have that kind of experience as guys who play in the league also coaching? Oh, no, it definitely is important. It's definitely different when um, – you, you're talking to a guy that's done it before or been where you've been and stuff like that. So I don't, I, I didn't get to know everybody yet, though, but I'm still in the process. So. You set personal goals for yourself in terms of, like, stats or, like, any, anything like that? Nah, I'm not. I, I, I set per, personal goals for myself. Usually I kind of, like, kind of get ahead of myself, so I kind of just take it, like, one step at a time. So. I guess how, how would you measure, like, where you feel your progress is? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, maybe my dad when he calls me. <laughs> <laughs> what are those conversations usually? I don't about? know. It's usually it's a lot of it's a lot of coaching involved in, in this call. So, yeah. How different are those conversations from Pop Warner days to pro days? They're not very different <laughs> at all. <laughs> uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you.